Hi, my name is Kara Peterson and I am here with Film Focus Makers and my guest today is Damon Williams. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. I'm glad that you could make it. I'm happy I could be here. So let me, are you, you live here in New York now? Yeah, I, I live in uh, Brooklyn, represent. Where in Brooklyn? Oh, I'm in Clinton Hill. Okay, I'm not too far from there, Prospect Heights. Oh, nice. oh, yeah, right yeah. So originally you are from Philly? Yeah, uh, born in Philly and then raised just outside in the Burbs, uh, uh, Ardmore, and then moved to Havertown, but I was, I was always within Haverford Township. Okay. Are you still very close to your roots in Philly, or have you kind of left it and moved uh, on? When I first moved to New York, I went back pretty frequently, and then as time progressed, it became less frequent to the point where I, I haven't been back since the, I guess like the holidays, which is kind of sad because like I still have really good friends that are there who I would love to see. I, want, I would love to see you guys. But uh, yeah, it just, it, it becomes uh, a little bit harder to go back uh, as time progresses. Now you also went to university in Philly mm -hmm. and I believe that you studied acting there. Yes, I did. So what prompted at that age, I mean, did you always know acting was your passion, or what made you want to study theater? Uh, it was, it was actually really funny. It was kind of always something that was in the back of my mind, but like anybody else, when you're sort of diving headfirst into anything, you have those fears of failure, and I just kept thinking, wow, what, what am I doing? Like, I have no business doing this. Like, that's for people who are talented, and... When I got to college, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I just said, hey, why not? At least try it. Maybe I'll like it. And if I like it, I'll see where it goes. Um, prior to that, all I had was an acting class in high school, which I had a lot of fun with. Okay. But I never really saw it as a career path. I mean, like anybody of that age, it's kind of hard to think what you want to do with the rest of your life. It's kind of Did your thing. parents kind of give you a hard time about your decision? or? No, they were actually always very, very, very supportive. In fact, my mom was secretly trying to push me in that direction. Um, I remember doing a monologue for her and my dad in our living room after being forced to because, you know, when parents ask their teenage children to do anything, there's there's a uh, uh, that wasn't me I was I was I fought against that uh, uh, at every corner but um but yeah I did that and my mom was blown away and she was I guess then she she knew that you know that's something that I should be doing with myself so it, it's nice to have parents that that support you when you were acting or when you started the acting, and when you look back, are there certain actors or filmmakers that really influenced the type of work that you wanted to do? Yeah, uh, I mean, Johnny Depp from pretty much from the gate, like from the start. Uh, Edward Scissorhands was always one of my favorite movies. I mean, Tim Burton is a great filmmaker uh, in terms of his imagination and Johnny Depp was just able to create a character that was unlike anything I'd ever seen. So, I mean, at that time I was, you know, still in grade school. Um, and I mean, his career in general, in terms of the characters that he's um, chosen to play has been, I mean, not only influential, but just admirable in my sense, just because they're, they're loners. And I feel for me, I'm, a part of me is able to relate to that. Um, what is it if, about acting that you that really drives you or that gives you that passion that makes you want to continue to do it? I think at the heart it's storytelling. Um, whenever you get together with people, you're exchanging stories. And I think it's, it's almost an, uh, an instinct that we have as people, um, sharing our own experiences. And that's... That's what I tend to gravitate towards um, in terms of filmmaking or acting or even, even music. It's all telling a story. It's all connecting with somebody else. Um, when you say you're telling a story, do you, a lot of times do you find that there's 
Are you drawing on things from your past of things that you want to tell? Yeah, a lot of times as an actor you have to draw on your own experiences and if you don't have the specifics in terms of that experience that you're asked to portray in terms of the script, uh, you can boil it down to something that you have experienced. I mean, we've all we've all experienced rejection. We've all have experienced. Hopefully, we've all experienced love. Um, so, at least the struggles uh, of love. yeah, exactly. At least the struggles of love. Uh, you know, we've all had loss. I mean, so yeah. now you've done a lot of acting in the past, and now you've kind of have switched gears a little bit and in going into production. I believe that now you're co-creating a series with somebody and you also are co-writing it now. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit more what the series is and who your partner is? Yeah, the series is called The Disposables. Uh, I'm currently developing the series and uh, writing the pilot with Lawrence Michael Parker, who's a talented filmmaker and director. How did you two meet? Uh, we met through a mutual friend. Uh, just to rewind back in terms of the story of the disposables, uh, me and a friend of mine, Anthony Comis, we <laughs> we created the series uh, just off of a simple idea, just hanging out on his roof deck one evening, uh, and he had the fortitude to run with it, and he wrote a short uh, short piece, which included the two characters that we came up with. And, you know, we shot it, it was fun, it was a good time, and he wrote another piece, and it, um, so he wrote a short piece, he ended up writing another one, uh, and we didn't really do anything with it, uh, and he's been a part of the Indies Lab for a couple months now, and that's where he met, uh, Lawrence. And Lawrence read the script. He liked it. Uh, I believe they workshopped it there. And Mickey wanted to be a part of it. And through that, Mickey and I were able to sit down and create backstory to add on to the script that Anthony had already written. And it just made it rich and rich and rich. And it just kept growing. Um, to the, the main plot? So the main, the main plot that Anthony and I originally had were just two low-grade... Uh, gangsters or wannabe gangsters who are trying to come up with an organized crime but their only job at the moment is disposing of dead bodies that's where you get the name the disposables okay. and out of that there's grown this entire backstory it's like all right well where do these two characters get to this point where we start the series and we've We've created this history for both of the characters that's very rich. I don't want to give it away too much because uh, things things are liable to change. Um, but right now, there's... I'll give you the log line. It's about my character, Victor Leroux, who infiltrates a rising organized crime syndicate in order to fulfill his dream of being an FBI agent. And by disposing of bodies, he feels is a good pathway to... Well, that's, uh, <laughs> that's the whole uh, sort of conflict in terms okay. of the series. It's doing all this wrong... But not necessarily for, a bad person? Well, or... it's, it's doing all this wrong in order to create right, because he's trying to bring down this organized crime syndicate. Okay. But in order to do that and build a case, he has to do a lot of bad things. So there's a moral obligation that he has, there's moral conflict that he has, and it's like, it's like delving into a black hole for him. And he's sort of trying to find his bearings in terms of where he stands as a person and trying to hold on to why he got involved into the fir in the first place. And what part of you relates to this character? Is, or is there a part of you that relates? Uh, definitely. I mean, there's, at the beginning of this series, there's, for all of the characters, even the, the quote-unquote gangsters, it's, it's a rebuilding. And I think uh, as a country, we all know what that feels like, particularly at this point in time. We're trying to rebuild, uh, a lot of people are trying to rebuild their lives, whether it's um, 
trying to find a new job or moving to a new location. And I mean, as an actor being in New York and trying to forge a career for yourself, I think I can definitely relate to that, particularly right now. Is there, what would you say your future? I mean, you're doing this series now. I mean, what mm -hmm. would you like your future to be? Would you like it to be doing more acting or getting more involved in filmmaking? Are there any particular type of projects you would really like to do? Uh, I definitely leave myself open because if you asked me when I first moved to New York uh, over three years ago, I would never give you the answer of, oh yeah, I'm going to be writing a series. I never expected myself to be involved in that capacity. So it's surprisingly nice to find that other outlet. I definitely want to be involved acting. Um, and it's something that I never want to leave, but I'm open to other forms of medium within the context of... Do you have a role of an actor that would be to die for? To die for? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know, James Bond would be pretty cool. That would work. <laughs> that is a, a, a cool guy. Um, so... As far as being an actor and a filmmaker, and I know that it is tough in New York City to make it, is there any advice that you could give somebody who is in the midst of it of what you would tell them to do? Be patient. Be patient. Uh, and just, I guess, settle down. Uh, it's a marathon, not a sprint. When you say settle down, can you elaborate? It's very easy to get anxious. And when you first move to New York, you got to get you got to get life together in terms of making money, a place to stay. You got to get settled into it. And then you can really start pursuing your goals in terms of a career. And it's very like I said, it's very easy to get anxious and think that, oh, I'm not doing anything. I'm wasting time. It's happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to thousands of other people who have pursued this. But. Just remember, you're always in a better situation than you think you are. Is there anything else that you wanted to promote or anything else that you're working on? Uh, the Disposables is probably the biggest biggest uh, project that I'm working on right now. So. When do you expect it to be? Because it's in the process now. Right. When do you expect it to be finished? Uh... <laughs> It's hard, it's hard to give a timeline on it, because right now we have an outline for the pilot, but obviously it's a series, so we have to outline basically an entire season and, and give the impression that it has legs to, uh, to maintain itself over a course of time. Where do you plan on marketing it? Anywhere it's interested. <laughs> Are you looking online? Are you TV? Or? Uh, we'll see where it comes. I know Netflix, particularly right now, their their model is moving towards um, TV series. Uh, I know Hulu offers that outlet as well. Uh, I'm not opposed to any of it. I guess my main focus right now is to get a finished product that I'm proud of and that is is worthwhile at the end of the day. And I have to ask, I mean, you're 25, correct? Yeah. I'm sure many people want to know, and I hate to ask this question, but are you single? <laughs> you've got that great smile. <laughs> oh, oh the, with the personal questions, oh my God. Oh, it's the last and only one. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not. Okay, well, I should say congratulations. Right. Then. Thank you. I'm, a, I'm a very lucky guy. Yes. Um, so you have had some success in that love department. It hasn't been all struggles for you. Never a bad day. Never a bad day. Well, I wish you lots of luck with uh, the disposables. Um, it definitely sounds like something... I like the idea behind the, the whole conflict between doing bad to get somewhere good because I think we all struggle and have a lot of conflicts in that way in our own lives. So I can see where you can find something to draw upon that. Yeah, like any, any series, you have to have some sort of humanity in it or else people aren't going to identify with it. And I think we can all... Uh, remember a time where we did something that we weren't so proud of even if it was a white lie to compliment somebody or giving your opinion on something that wasn't completely true but it was 
sort of just a tweak of how you actually felt. I mean, this is obviously on a more grand scale, uh, but at the heart, again, it's something that everybody can relate to. Is there any place that we can get a sneak peek of some work that you're doing or have done in the past? Uh, right now, I know that the Disposables trailer is up. Uh, we have a Facebook page for it. Uh, go check it out. Uh, what is it? Like it. <laughs> like it. Is it called Dis Disposables? And we'll find it? Yes. If you type in the Disposables, it'll come up. And uh, my reel is online at my Vimeo page, which I embarrassingly don't know the the actual can't think of the word the uh, address for um but if you type in my name if you google me it'll come up damon williams right if we google that we will find you that's excellent i look forward to seeing everything that you've done and have been going to be doing and i'm sure that seeing it too. <laughs> i look forward to the future all right so Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you.